Hello everyone, welcome back to Crowbeak's Gaming Gala, where today we are playing Solstice. It is a mystery visual novel from Moa Cube, the makers of Cinders, and it's even better than Cinders, if you're familiar with that game. If you're not, what makes this game cool is that it's a mystery with two different protagonists, so all of the branches can lead you to getting different information at different times. This is my second time playing it, and right now we are we are back with the Doctor, and he's dealing with Constance, who just had a nosebleed and passed out. So how does she feel? Much better now. The concoction he gave her had an unusual flavor. So this is this is where we kind of it tastes awful. Only okay, it's a re it's a recipe. It's an old recipe from back when we only used local plants from the aisles. So you probably won't know them. Now, there are a lot of plants in this town, and the previous doctor left plants behind that he's now taken care of. But it's interesting, did he bring these local plants from the Isles all the way to the north? Or are some of them here already? One of the strongest tonics he knows, very universal and very useful. I wonder if it's the same one he used on Lev. It was a pleasure to watch you prepare it. You're a very skillful doctor. Hair twirling going on. I wish my teachers felt the same. No. I've simply prepared this so many times, I could do it with my eyes closed. Really? And why is that? Most students in the Isles learn tonic first. Tonics first, otherwise they'd flunk most exams. Partying the night before, you know. I see. Your country sounds like a very nice place to call home. It is. Yet most of us choose to spend half our lives traveling. Someone once told me that curiosity is what makes people grow. It inspires us to try and learn new things. Growing as human beings is all very nice, but mostly we crave adventure. Boredom kills us more effectively than wild animals. But I babble about myself while my patient is waiting for her diagnosis. Talking with travelers from distant places is one of my favorite pastimes, Doctor. Talking with? Listening to, more like. I didn't give you a chance to speak. Anyway, you show symptoms of mild an anemia. It's nothing serious. A change of diet and something to strengthen your blood should be enough to put you back on your feet. I'm not surprised. It happens to me every year during true winter. The silent season always makes me feel weak and apathetic. This is probably far enough north that... Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think you ever see the sun during the game. Which, it could be a, a situation of this being far enough north that the sun actually sets and stays set for some weeks. Coming from Alaska, part of Alaska is like that, where the where the sun sets and doesn't come up for at least one day. I never lived that far north. The lower half or so of Alaska, the sun actually sets, but even in a place where the sun sets every day that's really far north, you still end up having less daylight. And there is there's a medical term called seasonal affective disorder, I think. The acronym for it is SAD, aw, oh, because most people, when they lose that, that exposure to the sun, not most people, a significant portion of people, when they lose exposure to the sunlight, will, they'll have, they'll have problems with their moods. And I am not really all that affected by, by it. I like the night, but I, yeah, I, I need more sleep in winter. Now this is a fun scene. I really like it. They both like to flirt. They're both pretty open about their sexuality, I think. But this is, uh, they're flirting right now. See, I'm glad there's someone like you in this city, Constance. I have a feeling we'll get along just fine. I think you may need some medication, though, to give your body a helping hand. I found some very noble-looking brandy in one of the cupboards the other day. It should just do the trick. I found alcohol a very efficient remedy for ailments of both mind and body. Trust me, I'm a doctor. They're flirting back and forth, just having fun with it. <laughs> Life has taught me never to refuse a generous offer from a well-intentioned man. I like that. But, and this, if I remember correctly, maybe not. This is, this is, when I played, when I played the uh, original demo of Solstice, their original preview build that they had, that they were sending out to the press, this was still part of the of the demo build. 
And I remember that because this is the conversation where you find out that Galen is gay. Talking to her. Let's see. The humming of the dome drives me crazy. Being cut off from the world lack people. Least favorite thing so far. Let's go with the humming of the dome. It makes my teeth hurt. I want to break things. I didn't realize you were such a violent person, Galen. Let's just hope you won't end up going on a killing spree. Yes. Well, don't worry. I'm a doctor first, so I won't be following these particular impulses. Glad to hear that. The world doesn't need more violence. I certainly could use some peace-loving people in my life. May I ask why, of all places in this world, you chose to come to this city? What can I say? I love adventure. I also have a teacher who travels a lot. She made sure to plant the love of change in me. She says being in constant motion and watching the world shift as you go is the best way to learn. He must be talking about Madame Getty. I see. So she sent you here to have a learning experience. No, nothing like that. We got to choose our first journey out of the Isles. Or we get to choose our first journey out of the Isles. Actually, Nana Gedi was ambivalent about my plan. She didn't want to let you go? Let me go? Spirits, no. It's not her place to let me do anything. She's my mentor, my teacher, not a slave driver. She was worried that coming to a place so different from what I'm accustomed to would be too much for me. It takes a lot of flexibility to adapt to new circumstances. If you ever feel like you need a hand adapting, or testing that flexibility of yours, remember that I'm here for you. I appreciate the offer, Constance. I'm flattered, really. But if you're offering to have sex with me, you'll have to be more direct about it. <laughs> That's another thing about this place. People speak in riddles, and I end up having to depend on my instincts. He likes being straightforward. The secrecy and stuff doesn't... doesn't jive with him so well, it seems. I'm flattered and uninterested. So it's a no, then? Well, that isn't something I hear very often. A pity. Unfortunately, my pupils are gone for the winter as well, so I can't offer you the company of someone more suited to your character. If I may be so bold as to offer you advice, though, Cassia might be interested in getting to know you better. Ah, there you go again. If you mean... Yes, I mean sex. Really, Galen, subtlety is not your fort. <laughs> like, it's just... It's great. They're both really open about their sexuality, but they're open about it in different ways. He's just like, yeah, let's have a good time. Except not with you, because you're a lady. Whereas she does all of these these innuendo things, and yet they both like flirting. I'm someone who's always liked flirting, but I'm not really interested in sex. I just enjoy the flirting. It's fun. It's a fun way to talk to people. So this this is a really neat, a really neat scene. And I mentioned before, I think when Galen first met Cassia, that there that during the during the preview build of the game i found out late in it that galen is gay and going through the game again it's neat to see all these little things where where galen is saying things that you realize oh he's attracted to cassia like from right off the bat there's one point i may not actually have gotten it with the choices i've made here but the first time i played through the full game uh there was one point where someone called it might have been constance actually called him a sly called Cassia a sly fox and Galen was like yeah he is a fox <laughs> little stuff like that that's a lot of fun I can see how people who live for adventure and hate staying in one place for too long would call haste a virtue uh, that applies to me there are times when haste is not is not called for for sure but I, in general, I don't like to waste my time. And while some things like relaxing and, and just unwinding is not necessarily a waste of time, when I don't need that, I prefer to be in motion, to be doing things. There are too many things that I want to do with my life. And I... He is hot. What do I think about Cassia? He is hot. Anyway, yeah, I like to be doing things. I like my time to be efficiently and well used. Pale and ginger is a killer combination. Ah, oh, I don't agree with that, though. For a retired warrior, he's also managed to stay in shape. Yeah. <laughs> You've noticed, of course. As my antidotes teacher used to say, antagonistic substances attract. Okay. Huh. Not using opposites attract, but that's exactly what he means? Kind of? Antagonistic substances attract. I guess it doesn't quite mean the same thing, but it base. Oh, no, because here it says he looks like the exact opposite of what I'm used to. Eh. 
Antagonistic? Would that mean hostility and desirability go hand in hand? Precisely! Okay, so this is different a bit from Opposites Attract. Kind of? I don't know. Nothing like a bit of controlled violence to spice things up. I like him. <laughs> Cassia is not my pick for that kind of adventure, but he can be charming company during long winter evenings. That said, it's not as if I haven't tried to get to know him in a more intimate way as well. This brandy was a fine idea, I must say. It really helps break the ice. Hope I won't get hiccups, though. There's no real cure for that, you know? It just has to pass, and I hate waiting. Anyway, friend, I answered your question, and now it's my turn to ask you something. You're speaking with the right person. I try to learn as much as I can about everyone I meet, and I rarely forget a thing. There'll be a time for asking about others. Right now, I'm much more interested in hearing your story, Constance. Why did you come to the city? Now, Yanni has already heard that you're not supposed to ask people stuff. And the first time I played through the game, I think and when I played through the preview as well, I didn't get that from her. So this was my... My story is not nearly as interesting as yours. I have little to say about it. I think we're leading into Constance saying the same thing, that you're not really supposed to ask people about their past. <laughs> Looks like I found yet another victim of a terrible deal with the infamous bank. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I was right. This is leading into her uh, informing him that it's basically taboo. <laughs> Excuse me for a second. I need to get some water. Whatever's in this bottle, it's nothing like the rum back home. Hmm. Changing the subject. You mentioned compacts, Doctor. I really like her, her angry look, her angry face here. That's a really good pose. So how many people don't rebel against it? You make it sound so very simple. Well, isn't it? I mean, how many guards can they throw at you, or are you simply too afraid to act? This isn't a topic I'm comfortable discussing with you. I like the way she phrases that. She's, uh... Angry! Oh my gosh. Enough! I apologize, Doctor. You obviously meant no harm by asking, but it is a dangerous subject. Now... Hmm. I took her as being angry there rather than terrified. I guess it's a thing that's hard to display without making a specific fear portrait for her. And this, I think, is the only scene in the game where it would have been used. But we could get into, like, the whole the Star Wars thing. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Because it's one of the possible, like, it's fight or flight. When you're, if you're afraid and that fight, fight, uh, fight or flight response kicks in, if fight is the direction you go, then anger is, is a thing that can happen pretty easily. I just realized how cool her headdress is. It's so pretty. <laughs> you would be scared as well if you knew half the things I do. There cannot and will not be a revolution in this city. Take it as a warning. <laughs> What's happened to the gracious host happy to answer all my questions? If you truly want to end your adventure prematurely, go on and ask around about rebellion. But leave me out of it. I prefer to leave such foolish notions to Laura. Haha. <laughs> Kaboom. Ah, so we backed up in time a little bit. We've now caught up with what Yanni was doing. Because she was talking to Laura in the tavern when these booms started going off. And neither of these folks was in the tavern. Noise came from the market. And it was loud. Let's go see what happened. So this is where the original preview demo, the preview build, ended. With this scene. Like, we got we got through this scene and then it, and then it ended. Not that that really means anything now, since I'm playing the whole game, I guess. Look, the lantern hasn't switched to night mode. Something must be off with the system, but what? Oh, okay. So there is, and I didn't notice this before, the lantern on the left that is, man, I wish I had turned on mouse cursor uh, in the recording, but I didn't. The lantern on the left is still bright, is still bright orange, as actually is the lantern swinging behind their heads. But below the lantern swinging behind their heads is a lantern that is blue. I assume that's what night mode means. There's still light, but it's, it's, it's darker and more night-tastic. 
I have a feeling we'll find out soon enough. You might want to back away. Just to be on the safe side. It feels like the entire city is about to fall apart. Mm, rays of light. Kaboom. Cinders also had backgrounds that were animated. Like this, the lantern swinging back and forth is a thing you might have seen in Cinders. But I don't remember any instances in Cinders where they they had something like this. Where the background changed quite a bit. Like, had the animations and everything going on. What happened? Wait, why did Cassia come in with Galen and Constance? Shouldn't he have come from the same direction as Yanni and Laura? Because they were all at the tavern together? Not a big deal. Huh, anyway. There's been an explosion! I like explosions. But this isn't really a game where you would want explosions to happen. The noise and the shaking stopped immediately afterward. So yes, I think it's safe to say it's over. The lamp. It looks dead. Oh, it's dead. <laughs> it's broken into pieces and laying on the ground. Do things like this happen often here? Constance? I haven't seen anything like this before. Constance, I believe, if I remember correctly, she's the one who's been here the longest. She's been here longer than anyone else. Laura must be a fairly new newcomer. You look fine to me, Laura. The stress will pass in a minute. If you say so, Doctor. She looks kind of angry, but she always looks kind of angry. She kind of is always kind of angry. Her story is kind of sad. What is there to tell? We heard what happened and we came to see its... And we can see its effects, Galen. Did anyone see who did this? There is no immediate external cause. There's no way to control the system from here, let alone cause an explosion. You're looking in the wrong place. Am I? Looks like all newcomers do nowadays is tell me how to do my job. Damn straight. You would do well to listen to their advice. You obviously know nothing about the city you're supposed to be protecting. I can assure you that whoever is responsible for this was likely acting from a distance, long before the actual event. That is, if there is a culprit at all. What do you mean by that? The city is old. Accidents like this are more likely to happen as technology ages. Now it's interesting that she says this, since before when she was talking to Istvan, she was saying that this thing was built to last. And that as a combined, um... A combined effort between the faculty, the, organ the tech organization she works for, and a bunch of magicians, it should not be having the problems it's having. She's, she's talking sabotage. So here, she must be trying to cover up the fact that she thinks it's sabotage, because, as she mentioned to Istban, she has to assume that everyone's a suspect. Someone running away from the market when we got here. Someone? There's hardly anyone left in the city. It was a ghost. Brief moments of heightened stress can make our minds play tricks on us. We shouldn't rely too much on our memories, Constance. Now why was that a branch? Huh. Oh, especially after we had that delicious brandy. <laughs> no, I didn't. I would still prefer to search the area and see if there are traces of anyone's presence. We should take care of the people at the inn first. You'll be needed there too in case something strange happen happens again. I wonder how many people there are in the city total, because we know there are, there are, let's see, there are, uh, how many people do we have? We have Galen, Yanni, Laura, Constance, Cassia, there's Sem, Slava, Lev, I'm trying to count all the characters, all the major characters, have I missed anyone? Istvan. So we have about nine, we have about nine main characters in the game. Uh, eight, really, if you consider that, you, that we've seen... That Lev has not seen much in the game, but, but nine will include him. And we know that there are... We know that there are other people still in the city because Istvan's guards are here. There are probably other people who do things like clean the streets and everything, but they're just not... For whatever reason, they're not the characters that get talked to. I mean, you can only, you can only have so many characters in the story and still have things be coherent and not get wildly, not have the scope of the game wildly expand. And it stands to reason that not everyone's going to have anything to do with whatever's going on. Oh, now here she mentions sab sabotage. 
Anyway, the question I was getting at is how many people are still in the city total. I would be curious to know. But she mentions here that it could be sabotage. I guess she's she's still hiding the fact that she assumes sabotage is going on. The risk of another malfunction of this magnitude happening in the next few days is practically non-existent. I'm beginning to think finding you in the middle of that icy desert was more than just luck. What else can you tell us? That's a good question. And you know what? We'll find out next time. If you're enjoying the game, I consider you to, uh, I consider you, I encourage you to consider picking it up. It's made by Moa Cube, and it's available for Mac and Windows uh, via Steam and off Steam. Links for that is in the description, and I, I hope you guys have a good one. Thanks for watching, and bye.